this plane started life as an ordinary passenger jet, but these days it's something really special. And I'm really excited because I'm going to get to fly with it on its next mission. Like any other aircraft, it's going to take off from an airfield, and like any other jet, it's going to go up through the weather to the top of the first layer of the atmosphere. But then, it's going to keep going up into the stratosphere, above almost all the water vapour. At that point, the back of the aircraft will open up, and what will be revealed is a telescope capable of looking at the richness of the universe in the infrared. And I will be closer to the stars than I've ever been in my life. Meet Sophia the Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy. So here we are, ready to go. There are 25 people on this aircraft. The crew and the scientists are all back there doing the last preparations. And I'm really excited about two things. One is that we're going to fly around the back of the planet in the dark, looking out at the universe. And the other one is that I have never had this much legroom on a flight in my entire life. 45. 50, bells closed. 610, 610. 10 degrees longer than last. Right now, we just uh, left uh, Nevada and we're just to beam Salt Lake City right now. Oh, so Salt Lake City's right over yeah, there? Yeah, Salt Lake City's right there. And you do have the best view on the plane. It's the greatest view in the world. I, you know, this is the best job in the world. That's I, the pilot's it privilege, really is. isn't it? To look it out really in the sky. It is. The higher we go, the better the telescope can see, for lack of a better term. And uh, because there's less moisture in the air, the higher we go. We've got the mission director, so this is the, the, the science heart of the mission. This is where the decisions are being made. This is the science ops, so the chief scientist, people who control the science ops are sitting here. They're looking right at the telescope. They've got data on the screens, you can see the constellations that they're following. It's the beginning of another long flight for Sophia's science operations manager, Dr. Jim DeBizer. Tell me why infrared astronomy is worth all of this effort. There's a lot of dust and gas between us and a lot of objects of interest. Stars, when they form, for instance, are completely enshrouded in their natal cocoon of dust and gas. The infrared allows us to peer into that and look at what's going on at the center of these star forming regions and actually find out how these stars form. I like to use the analogy of a car's radio and a GPS. You can go into a tunnel and you can't get your GPS signal anymore, but you can't get a radio signal. And that's because the radio has a much longer wavelength. So when we're looking into space, going to longer wavelengths like the infrared allows us to penetrate into areas and see things that we can't see in the optical. We're observing the invisible 